Have you ever been playing chess and your opponent offers you a trade? Maybe a knight for a bishop or a rook for a rook or a queen for a queen or even something a little more interesting like they offer you two rooks for a queen or a knight and a bishop for a rook or something along those lines. Today I had the most fascinating trade opportunity I have ever had and actually that I've ever even seen. Um, my opponent gave me the ability to trade my queen and rook for four minor pieces, two knights and two bishops. Never had an opportunity like that before. Um, and normally speaking, the three pieces, if it's just for a queen, is better. And two pieces if it's, is better than a rook. But four pieces for a queen and a rook, I had no idea. I mean, I felt like the queen and the rook should, in its more points, it should be winning. But by how much, I wasn't sure. So I'm going to show you the game now where I had a chance to give up my queen and rook for four minor pieces. Let's take a look. All right, so I was white in this game. Let's go ahead and take a look. My opponent played the Scandinavian, and I decided to go for a secret line that I teach in my E4 course. If you haven't checked that out already, the link is in the description, but this guy transposed into a French, which is fine. I also have a, a secret line here as well. And most people here, vast majority of people are going to play the move C5, in which case I hit him with the surprise move B4. And there's, this is called the wing gambit, but I have a little spin on this that I, that I teach in my course. Anyway, opponent decided to play Bishop C5, which to be honest with you, it's just a bad move. It's just not a good square for the bishop because it's going to waste the tempo with d4, which is exactly what I did. Bishop b6, c3, c5, bishop d3. I'm doing great here. h6 is another not awesome move. It's just kind of too slow. I castled knight to c6. And here I kind of misplayed. Uh, I had a nice opportunity. If I would have captured here, lured the bishop back out, then played b4 and b5, and I just gain a lot of space very quickly. And queen a4, black's pieces are kind of awkward. Like I said, lots of space here. This bishop doesn't really have much of a future. Bishop to a3 looks pretty nice. My knight can pretty much hop wherever I want to. Great position for me. So that's what I should have done. I didn't see all of that. And I just played a3 trying to set up b4, um, which is not as good. But still got into a decent position. After my opponent castled, I played queen to d3, setting up this battery, which is checkmate on h7. And it's not that easy for my opponent to stop. Like a normal move like g6, well, then I have bishop takes h6. And so they played knight to f5. The problem with knight to f5 is it allows g4, which I did see and I did play. The knight, you know, needs to move or I'm going to take it, but it can't move because black gets checkmated. So my opponent played knight here and... I failed to realize the the threat behind this move. I thought, what's the big deal? I'm going to go ahead and take the knight, and then after this trade or this trade, I don't really care. I totally missed Black's next move, bishop to b5, which is uh, skewering the queen and the rook here. And there's a double threat here that I can't really save both of these with my queen. So I, I'd like to be able to move to somewhere like e2 to keep an eye on both of these pieces since they're both being attacked by the knight. But of course, I can't go there. I also can't go to e4. And at the end of that, wherever I do decide to go, I'm losing my rook. So when I realized that, I started thinking about, about what other options I had. And I came across the line, queen takes d4. And the point is that after black takes me, I'm going to take here. Black's going to take here. I'm going to take here. And at the end of all that, which is what happened, at the end of all that, I just gave up my queen and rook, but I have one, two, three, four pieces. Now, like I said at the intro, you know, normally the three pieces against the queen, three pieces are going to be better. Two pieces against the rook, the two pieces are going to be better. This is a weird situation. I've never had this in a game. I don't even think I've ever seen this before. The only thing I've seen or, or, or done is when I played against Stockfish, with four pieces and a king against the king and a queen at the end of the game with no other pieces. But um, here we are in the middle of the game. And if you'd like to guess what Stockfish's evaluation of the position is, go ahead and do that. What do you think Stockfish evaluates this position as? Queen and rook versus the four pieces. Well, if you had a chance to do that, Stockfish says minus 6.8. Minus 6.8. <laughs> so it doesn't like my position at all. It says it's not very good. And um, yeah, I didn't think it was quite that bad. But let's see what happens as the game goes on. So queen to h4, attacking my knight, bishop to e3. I'm trying to kind of set up, uh, you know, a situation where all my pieces are defended so that the queen can't do much. And so this defends this, this defends this, this defends this. You know, I'm starting to get there, right? So 
queen takes here. I have to be a little careful here. I can't just like move my knight or I get uh, skewered here and lose the rook. So I played king to e2 to avoid that. I do lose a pawn here, but now I get all my pieces nicely defended and protecting my king. Black captures, brought the knight here to attack the queen. Rook to g1, and I actually realized that I might be able to get an attack on black's king with my bishops aimed this way if I can get my knight coming in along with my rook. It looks actually pretty dangerous for black. Now, Stockfish says I'm crazy, minus seven for black, but it's not that easy. And after the next couple of moves, the evaluation gets more and more in my favor. Now it's minus five. And then after this, now it's minus four and a half. Now it's minus four, right? I'm making a little bit of progress. And black has to be careful. If I can get out of this pin, this bishop is going to be very dangerous to black's king. And I'm, I might even be able to, to win some material or even potentially make a checkmate threat. But opponent played rook to e7, and I completely blundered the game away with my next move. Uh, unfortunately, this was a blitz game, so I didn't have a lot of time to really think through. I feel like this would have been really interesting to play in a longer time control game because I don't think it's that easy for black to win, even though they do have, you know, a lot of extra material. Anyway, I completely messed up with Kings F3. And if you'd like to pause and try to find Black's uh, winning move, go ahead and do that. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is Rook takes E3, which my opponent did find, unfortunately. The point is that I can't take back with the pawn or I'm going to be losing my knight. So I have to take back with the king. But then after Rook to E8 check it forces my king away from the knight anyway, unless I want to block, but I'm, I'm still losing a piece regardless. And so I'm actually losing two pieces for the rook. And at, at the end of all of the trades, um, I'm just left with, you know, two pieces for the queen, which is not enough. And on top of that, I'm in trouble here with the pin. My king is not safe. I don't really have any type of fortress. And the game uh, basically was over at this point. There's just too many threats and I just can't deal with everything. So... Unfortunately, uh, you know, didn't end quite like I was hoping. You know, I wish I could have told you the story of how I got the four pieces and then somehow I managed to get a brilliant attack on the king and checkmate him with my four pieces against the queen and the rook. Didn't work out that way, although I do feel like if my king had been in a safer position, this would have been a completely different story. I think the fact that the king was kind of stuck in the middle and really had nowhere to go uh, was why the pieces weren't better because I had to basically keep two pieces just defending my king the whole time. I couldn't really use them to attack. If you imagine if my king is like over here in the corner with like a pawn and guarding it, then my pieces are going to be free to do whatever, you know, I want. So anyway, I thought it was a super interesting game. Like I said, I've never had that happen before. Let me know if you guys have had a game like this. I would be really interested to see it if you have the, 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 uh, the link to the game or, or something like that. But Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that, and um, like I said, check out the course if you want to see my secret line against the French and the Scandinavian. Uh, links in the description. But having said that, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.